massive wheel gap we have here, especially out here in the rear. And the cool thing about bags is that it's super convenient when you're doing maintenance, doing car washes, or if you just have something stuck in there that you need to fix. Airing up all the way is just super, super convenient to have on your car. <laughs> Get our zip ties and we're gonna go zip tie the braided steel leader line to our brake line. So just so that it doesn't play around over here. Just gonna zip that up. And we don't want it sticking out. So what we're gonna do is chop this off. And voila. So bags are sick because not only can you control it with the controller, but you can also control it with a Bluetooth app on your iPhone, I believe also with an Android. So this is my air out. This is zero PSI in all four bags. This is gonna be my ride height. The fronts are a little janky, but it is my daily ride height, so that explains it. This is my, what I call my 80-40. So whenever I go to like a drive through or something with a steep incline to prevent breaking my front lip, I encounter the front of my car with this 80-40 setup so that the lip doesn't touch. Then once my front end has went over like the driveway, whatever I'm trying to avoid hitting my lip, I hit it with the all four lift and it lifts all four up just like this. And then you can go up as higher as you want, but these are the presets that I have. And then I air out. So here I have for you guys my 2021 Subaru WRX on airlift struts with 3P management. Sorry guys, it is a little messy, but if you saw in our recent video that we posted, we just installed these 44C dual chrome compressors. Just because the 380C, the smaller black compressors that I used to have, um, they were pretty shot and that's what I mean by sometimes you can have things that get messed up with the whole air system. And then we have my manifold sitting back there that's the brains for everything so literally all the airlines are connected to it and it just controls it makes this thing um, work like a gem so these are the fuses that people actually talk about all the time saying oh if you get bags your fuses are gonna pop all the time that barely happens I did have an incident actually where my fuses popped all the time and that was due to a faulty compressor but yeah bad things can happen when you have bags obviously it's a given with almost any mod that you put on your car something is definitely bound to happen but I say as long as you do your wiring right and you don't abuse your compressors or your bags, they definitely have no reason to shoot. I do abuse my bags. I literally air up and air out all the time. And with my new compressors, I literally have had no electrical issues, especially with the fuse. We do have the airlift struts and then we can see the top hat. It does come with these nice camber plates on top with adjustable dampening. And on the other side, obviously the same, we have the camber plate. You have pretty nice slotting adjustment as well as the adjustable damper. And it just, overall, is a big dubs when it comes to air suspension as well. Now, I bought this car as a daily, and it is a brand new modern car. And I drive this almost everywhere. I drive it to LA, 50 miles to school, home and back every single, almost every day, and everywhere else around in San Diego. I put my car on air suspension because I wanted to enjoy my ride. And this is not necessarily the car that I want to scrape in, nor is it the car that I want to damage. I enjoy having non-damaged panels and a front lip that is in one piece because again, it is my daily. If I had coilovers, I would be breaking my front lips like almost all the time. And it's not exactly something that I wanted to do with this car, at least. In fact, with one of my old dailies, my 2016 Nissan Altima, I put on some Godspeed Mono SS coilovers and slotted the strut for the ultimate slam. You can imagine what that was like. One of the funniest things I hear from people are when they talk about how you can't get a good ride height with air suspension. And that's definitely false. I drive like this with air suspension. I used to have it set lower, but I recently lifted the fronts more and got it aligned that way just so that I could have a comfortable ride 
during my commute to school. Don't get me wrong, there are definitely some bad apples out there where some bag owners will drive the car with monster truck fitment. And the truth is, not everyone is down for the low life, and they don't have to be. And that's the best part about bags, honestly. You can ride literally however you want. Now let's be legit again, guys. This is the ride height of most static people on the WRX, I guess, or for other people's cars in general. And as cool as it would be to permanently be at this ride height, you don't get the advantage of being extra lower when you want to take pictures. Though this may be low, I would not be satisfied if I were on coilovers, which is why bags are super nice, because it'll allow me to go that extra inch and a half or two inches more to air out. Well, as the front, <laughs> if I was static, this would definitely probably be my fitment, but I am not satisfied with it. So being on bags, it makes it more satisfying to reach the fender to the actual lip of the wheel. The only thing is for me, my wheels actually can't rotate once I get even lower because the wheels actually sit on the actual fender since the offset is pretty aggressive. So this is as much as I can do without actually being stuck. I feel like people who really deserve the word static are those who truly drive balls deep to the floor. And I'm talking like lip to fender and an inch off of the floor. And what I mean by that is basically my air out, but they drive like this. There's no absolute way that you can drive like this with this kind of fitment without, you know, burning out your tires or killing your fenders for the most part. Not everyone can afford to drop thousands of dollars on an air setup. I mean, it's literally the same or equivalent to buying a new used car. Choosing what suspension is best for you all depends on what you plan to do with your car. Now, most people would agree that coilovers are great for people who are tracking, racing, or daily driving their cars, but that's not always the case. Though coilovers would give you the best performance overall, from custom spring rates to adjustable struts, you can do the same adjustability and even more with air suspension by increasing your bag PSI and pairing it with some pretty good tires. Obviously, that's not what I have because my bag's right around at 45 to 55 PSI with some stretch tires. And on top of this car being my daily driver, this car on air suspension provides a lot of comfort. And with coilovers, it's kind of hard to achieve that little comfort zone that you're seeking for, especially when you like to drive low. Me, I like being low, but I don't like to sacrifice my comfort for my daily drives. Happily enough with air suspension, I am able to be low, but also have that state of comfort right at the same time. So yeah, obviously, there are some things that can go wrong when you have bags. Um, when I first installed my air suspension, I had no one to teach me anything about it. So I honestly didn't know what to avoid with the whole air suspension deal. I just installed the air suspension and just like prayed that everything would go right. It wasn't until I realized that my stock wheels sat too close to the airbags, like the actual air bellow up front, that literally popped a hole through both of my bags. Well, one of my bag and then the other one had some like wear and tear and stuff like that, which were really expensive to replace. If you guys are worried about popping your bags, um, there's absolutely no way to pop them unless your tire sits like right beside the bag. As you guys can see, I have a bunch of clearance because I do have an aggressive offset with my wheels so it sits fairly farther away from the bag than it does from the tire. If you guys are having meaty tires, you're probably gonna not have much clearance, but it'll still be enough to clear. I know when um, Jaden had his Cosmos wheels on, 
he had some pretty meaty tires but he was still able to clear without popping his bags which is a total dubs so don't be scared of popping your bags guys you can drive it as hard as you want it's not gonna pop I promise you but yeah you can drive this as hard as you want the only downside is of course it's a little bit softer because they are air springs unless you're driving with super stiff PSI in which I don't because that's not what I had my car aligned to and I don't want to mess up my tires you can literally canyon this thing I don't do it obviously because I drive around with about 45 to 55 PSI but if your bags are properly squared away go ahead and corner this thing do what it's made to do there's actually a lot of people who track their car with air suspension and nothing bad has happened now there are definitely certain cars that I would put on coilovers but there are specific cars that I would prefer to have on air suspension just like my WRX I do sometimes joke around with my friends and just tell people that I hate having bags that's completely satire sometimes I'm just I don't know it's just funny Unless you're going for a track build or you just miss ripping it around through the canyons, I don't think that anyone would actually want to switch from air suspension back to coils. Like I said, unless you're doing like actual action with your car. Burble tunes are for posers. Now obviously, why else would I put a burble tune on my car? How much horsepower do you have and how did you do crackle and pop tune? Um, definitely not a lot of horsepower. Keep up with stock STIs. I have done a little roll with an Audi S5. I believe that was a V8 with a, with boost because I had a front mount, but it was a V8. So it was a little confusing. I think that's how it goes, right? Uh, definitely not a lot of power. It only has an intake, the tune, and then the axle backs, which do absolutely nothing. But we still have the catalytic converters and everything else. So definitely not that much. I uh, do have a tune by Ambot Tuning. I'll put the link to his website in the description down below. So I get this question a lot and it is, where did you buy the control support for your airlift? I think, yeah, this is definitely what you mean. So this is my airlift controller. It's kind of dirty. <laughs> this is my airlift controller and it is held by this magnetic phone mount that I got on Amazon. Check that out, cool pow. Do you need dark rims and paint exhaust tips black with heat resistant paint? Um. Double-double, extra toast, and then grilled onions, and a cup of water. Yep. Hello. Yeah. This is a burger. Can I get two packs of spread? No, oh, thank you, man. Actual bra moment, guys, because I forgot to record it. But here is my bidden burger. I got actually. This is not usually what I get. I got one double-double with grilled onions and extra toast, and it's, it's still smacks. It's absolutely crazy. I usually get like a 4x4, four four, which is like four meats and then four cheeses and then extra toast, grilled onions, stuff like that. If I want to tone it down, I actually not tone it down. If I don't feel like opening my mouth, I get two double-doubles with the grilled onions and extra toast, and I just go crazy on that, especially with the water and with the spread. It probably doesn't look appetizing, but this is probably one of the best burgers that I've ever had in my life. If you're a local and you hate in and out or if you're a tourist and you hate in and out you just don't know what to order you need to order the right things guys because this stuff smacks
so sorry, neighbors. I like ne never actually do that. I only do that for the videos. Um, but yeah, my neighbors don't care. It's just I feel bad for making that kind of noise. Stock everything beside the axle backs, basically a muffler deletes. And I recently got these tips. These are, they're called Ginsanity and they're really cheap. But the reason that I got them is because um, the tips are like curled, so it's not sharp. So from the outside, even though it's dirty, you can still see the diameter of it. And it has Jin in it, it has my name in it. So it looks pretty cool. Also, I didn't like the old tips from Faction Fab. They just looked a little bit too much like a bell. And I kind of wanted something to stick out more. And those tips, you couldn't make them stick out like this. So yeah, the car is very dirty, if you can't tell, as well as the exhaust tips. But when the car is clean, it does look like a gem. But for right now, this is what it looks like with all the dirt, guys. Ian just shipped out his new tires to my house to pair with the tandems that he ordered back in December and he's finally ordering the rubber. Although I think he made a mistake because um, the wheels he got are pretty wide compared to the front. He got some 265s and the fronts are 225. I know he's trying to do staggered but I'm pretty sure he wasn't planning to get 265 so. But anyway guys, as I was talking about last night. These are the pop bags that we faced when we first installed my bags and I rubbed out on them. As you can see, this is from the passenger side where the tire actually really rubbed in on it. So basically how it was is the, the bag was sitting on the strut with the tires up and my stock tires were way too meaty. And basically what happened was when I was driving, the inner sidewall was rubbing on this thing. And by the time that I knew that it was rubbing on the bag, my remote showed that it deflated to zero. And I was like, no, and I was driving too. So it was super terrible. I'm honestly just glad that this didn't pop when I was on the freeway. It happened when I was just driving on the normal street in National City. And then this is the other one. This one isn't as bad. It didn't make a hole like this one where the air can puncture through, but it did rub through to the point where you could kind of see wire going on right here. You could still use these, but I just chose not to because, you know, better safe than sorry. They still do work, so I keep them here now, just like they're my little, my little trophies. I believe each bag cost me 200 each, so it was super sad that I bought brand new bags and the next week I had to spend $400 just to replace both of these. My rookie mistake, honestly, but you know, you win some, you lose some. It's all part of the game.